season's over, but NFL teams still have some chance to play for the treats, some candy, and wreak some havoc on some good teams in the NFL. Hey, how are you folks? Jason Norris alongside Ian Eagle in New York with you on the End Zone presented by TiVo here on CBSSports.com and on your TiVo DVR via TiVo Cast. And uh, we're in week 11. Yep. There are teams that stink. That's, I mean, that's, that is an obvious thing. kind statement. of blunt. They are teams that stink. There are teams that aren't very good. When you're 0 and 9, you're not a good football team. We understand that. When you're 1 and 8, you're not a good football team. We understand that. But you have a chance to play spoiler here in week 11, and that's what we're going to address in this segment. The four teams that have the best shot or have a shot to play spoiler. And, uh, you know, you've got Carolina at Green Bay, Miami at Philly, Tampa Bay and Atlanta would be the spoiler team there. And Pittsburgh, the Jets. The Jets are the spoiler. And in my opinion, of those four teams, the New York Jets, coming off of bye, have a chance to be the biggest spoiler of those four. Well, we should mention the reason why we're, we're doing this topic is because St. Louis shocked everybody last week. They knocked off the New Orleans Saints. Scott Linehan's team got their first win of the season. We know that the Rams have a lot of talent. They've been injury-riddled, and finally it came together. The law of averages indicate that the Miami Dolphins are not going to go winless. You look at their schedule, you try to figure out which games on their schedule they might be able to win. And the reason why of the four teams that we just laid out, Jason, I'm going to pick the Dolphins as the best chance to maybe shock the rest of the league this week is because of the mystery surrounding their quarterback, John Beck, the rookie out of BYU. Philadelphia doesn't have any tape on him. Zero. They're trying to prepare for him. They don't know his tendencies. Now, you know, there are moments in professional athletes' careers where they don't know enough to be overwhelmed. And he might just be able to walk in there and, off pure adrenaline, make something happen. The downside to that, he's going against Jimmy Johnson, yeah. one of the great defensive <laughs> minds in the NFL. And there are going to be players coming from all angles on blitzes. Uh, for John Beck to deal with. But because of the mystery factor, uh, I will take Miami as at least a chance to make a game of it against Philadelphia. The Jets, we know what they are. Oh, of course. And Pittsburgh, they're on a roll. I I don't think Mike Tomlin is going to allow them to take that week off and, 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 you know, not make that Cleveland win stick. The reason, I like what you said before we started this about John Beck's going to see players coming from angles he didn't know existed. I I like that. I I thought that was very good. But the reason I took the Jets in this situation is the fact that they're coming off a bye. Kellen Clement started the week before the bye. Now he's had a week to prepare. He's seen the, the Steelers. He... You know, he may not know what the de- – because that's another defense It's going to throw you oh, out of players on angles think, that you have no idea where they're You don't think from. Dick LeBeau is uh, chomping at the bit? He's fantastic. But, but the Jets have had a week to get healthy. They've had a week to get back. They've had a week to prepare. And Pittsburgh has had back-to-back emotional wins. The one against Baltimore on Monday night. Then they play Sunday in a comeback win against Cleveland. It's a, you, you hate, I hate the cliche trap game, in the, especially in the NFL. No, it's legitimate they're all point. professionals. But this is the prototypical cliche of a trap game. Well, we're going to see if Eric Mangidi can get his team ready because they desperately need a win. You talk to people around that team, and it's, it's hit rock bottom. And, you know, for this team now to put 2007 off to the side and start thinking about 2008, I don't know where the players' heads are yet. They know this season is over. They know that there are going to be a lot of changes. There are going to be some players out there playing for pride and, you know, individual numbers to see if, if they can at least make some headway in the way they're perceived around the NFL. Uh, I think we both agree, though, on the other two teams. Atlanta right now, uh, they're just a mess with Bobby Petrino. Even though they've won two in a row. Isn't they're that a mess. Guy, isn't that kind of interesting here that the two teams with the best record, who could play spoilers this weekend, uh, are the two that we think have the least chance to actually get a victory? Carolina, who, who is... Uh, no, well, oh, they, they may be starting no a fourth. Offense. They may be starting a fourth quarterback of no. the season this year. I mean, no offense. They can't get the ball to Steve Smith, and he's upset about that. Uh, and Atlanta, you, you see what Carolina's done here, losing three straight. By the way, Carolina hasn't won a home game yet this season. Yeah, I just think also you have to look at the opponents in those particular yeah, cases. That's because the other part of it. Tampa Bay also uh, coming off a bye. And this is big. Yeah. John Gruden recognizes how, how big a game this is to to make sure this team is a factor come December in the NFC. And with Green Bay, they're on a roll. Brett Favre is treating every game like it might be his last game. 
and it's working for him. And this team is beginning to believe that they're as good as anybody in the NFC right now. And it's fun to watch. You know, from someone who grew up in the Midwest watching Brett Favre destroy. You grew up in the Midwest? I think we've talked about this before. I, I never knew that. Well, you can send a present there. We'll talk about it. But the... Brett Favre it is, it is very enjoyable to watch him uh, as he's progressing here uh, towards the end of the in season. In the heartland? Were you in the heartland of the, of the Midwest? Straight in the heartland. On a farm? No. <laughs> in the Motor City. On a uh, car. That's kind of the I Midwest. was born in a Chevy. Plenty more to come here on the end zone presented by Tebow. I don't think my mom would be very it's happy. TMI. That, by that's the way. Uh, too much information. <laughs> the end zone presented by Tebow rolls on. No more topic here. What are we getting to? We're going to get to uh, the impact rookies. As we roll on here on CBSSports.com and on your TiVo DVR, via TiVo Cast. Where were you born? That's that's irrelevant. <laughs> what? You you attack. I'm on the defense.